This time on Rat and Cat Search and Survival, the top survival stories from December 2020. Welcome to Rat and Cat Search and Survival, where we take a look at stories of those who have gone missing so others can learn how to survive. I'm Nakia. So let's take a look at who survived December 2020 in the wilderness. A couple of incidents on Mount Hood. 16-year-old Gurbaz Singh was climbing with a team and nearly to the summit when he slipped on a section called the Pearly Gates. He slid about 500 feet down the mountain into a rocky section called the Devil's Kitchen, shattering his leg. Lucky to be alive, he was lowered partway down the mountain by a rescue team and then airlifted to the hospital for surgery. Also on Mount Hood, 32-year-old Carolyn Sunbaum was climbing the mountain when she sat down in an area for a rest called the Devil's Kitchen. There was another climber nearby that saw her, then after turning around for a moment, noticed that she was nowhere to be seen. Mount Hood is a volcano, and it turns out a gas vent known as a fumarole had melted the snow below the surface, forming a 14-foot deep hole under the snow. Sunbaum broke her shoulder in the fall. If the nearby climber had not witnessed her disappear, there's a strong chance she wouldn't have been found in time to be rescued alive. The area she fell is actually what's left of Mount Hood's volcanic crater after a large portion of the summit broke away about 1,500 years ago and a colossal lahar that altered the course of the Columbia River Gorge miles away. Today, sulfuric gases can often be seen rising from the area, hence the name Devil's Kitchen. And Sunbaum isn't the only one to have run into trouble in the area. In 1934, after climbing Mount Hood, Victor Van Norman decided to explore a fumarole on his way back down the mountain. Unfortunately, he was overcome by the toxic fumes and perished. In 2014, 59-year-old James Adams was seriously injured after falling into a fumarole. And in 2015, three climbers fell and one slipped into a fumarole. In both cases, they were able to be rescued before being overcome by the fumes. Global warming has greatly decreased the snowpack on Mount Hood, exposing more fumaroles to the surface and exposing them earlier in the season. Local rescue teams have had to adjust their rescue protocols to deal with the increased danger. Mount Hood's most recent explosive gas eruption occurred around 150 years ago, and last major eruption occurred about 200 years ago. Northwest of Mount Isa in northwest Queensland, a group of five were driving in the outback when they took a wrong turn and became stuck in a flooded area. They spent the night in the vehicle. The next morning, three from the group set out for help, while a father and his 10-year-old son remained in the vehicle. The three friends walked 31 miles to the nearest large town, Mount Isa, and were able to call for help. A Life Flight helicopter brought them back to the Mount Isa airport. A man was climbing along an old rock quarry below Ensign Peak in Salt Lake City, Utah, when he got too close to the edge and fell over, tumbling down 100 feet and landing on a rock ledge. He lost his cell phone in the fall and spent five hours stuck up there, yelling for help before a nearby camp of homeless people heard him and phoned for police. There were several shark attacks in Florida in December. Off Amelia Island, a 16-year-old girl was bitten on the back of her foot. Off Avalon Park Beach, 16-year-old Zach Davis was bitten on the arm. And a 39-year-old man was bleeding profusely as he walked home from a shark attack off Siesta Key when somebody spotted him and called for help. There were nearly 15 shark attacks along the Florida coast in 2020. And here's an odd one that you might have heard about near Melbourne, Australia. Tracy Noonan was out for a run when she felt a massive thump on her back, which knocked her to the ground. A kangaroo had attacked her. Noonan threw rocks and fled, but the kangaroo kept coming after her, jumping over fences to reach her. She said that she thought I was going to kill her. Park rangers believe that the roo was actually angry about the perfume she was wearing. Some scent in the perfume called Stash by Sarah Jessica Parker, the actor, was driving the kangaroo crazy. Noonan was eventually able to take refuge in a nearby home. With so many people staying indoors because of the coronavirus, kangaroos and other wild animals have been venturing deeper into more populated but deserted areas, and in a number of cases are being more aggressive. And on Christmas Day in the Catskill Mountains, an avalanche smashed through Overlook Lodge after a heavy rainfall. Fortunately, no one was injured. So what can we learn from these stories? First of all, several of these people survived because they were not hiking alone. Secondly, stay away from cliff edges. 
Falling off cliffs is one of the leading causes of fatalities in the wilderness. There's another recent example of this in Search and Recovery Stories, a video I just made and posted a few days ago for my Patreon supporters. Uh, recovery stories are stories of people who didn't make it out of the wilderness alive and they tend to be a little bit too graphic for uh, YouTube. I'll put a link to my Patreon page below if you're interested in joining. Thirdly, use shark repellent devices. I recently talked a bit more about options for repelling sharks in another video. I'll also put a link to that below. Uh, finally, nature is wild and that's part of the reason we go out there, right? Sometimes, despite our best plans though, we fall into a volcanic vent. Hopefully we've put enough redundant safety plans in place that we'll live another day for another adventure. What about you? What did you learn from these stories? I'll look forward to your survival tips in the comments below. Until next time, I'm Nakia and this is Rat and Cat Search and Survival. Get out there, be safe, and enjoy the wild.